So hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about astigmatism clock dial test. So astigmatism clock dial chart consists of a series of lines of equal length from the center. And these lines are pointing towards the number which are similar to the face of the clock. And the angular difference between two number is equal to 30 degrees. Before we start with the actual procedure of astigmatic clock dial test, I want you to know about the optics behind these astigmatic chart. Link will be given in a description box or you can click I button also. So procedure of astigmatic clock dial test, it is a monocular procedure. So you have to occlude the other eye of the patient. So first step is to determine the patient best vision sphere and record the visual acuity. Best vision sphere is the aspherical lens which is giving a maximum visual acuity to the patient. Remember to do fogging for the hypermetropic patient. And after finding the best vision sphere, you have to record the patient visual acuity. So with best vision sphere, you're gonna record the patient visual acuity and by this table, you're gonna estimate what is the refractive error of the patient. Suppose here patient is reading with best vision sphere 6 by 18. So it is estimated that the uncorrected astigmatism is around 2 diaptrical cylinder. According to this table, you're gonna add a plus power which will be equal to the half of the estimated astigmatism from the table. Suppose if patient is reading 6 by 18, so it is estimated the uncorrected astigmatism is around 2 diopter cylinder. So half of that will be 1 diaptrical sphere which we gonna add to our best vision sphere. So this is a step 1 where by using best vision sphere we are bringing the circle of least confusion on the retina. That's why patient is having the maximal visual acuity which is provided by any spherical lens. And this is a step 2 where by adding the half of estimated cylindrical power which in our case was plus 1. So the total will be minus 1 diaptrical sphere. What this step is going to do, it is going to bring the back focal point on the retina and circle of least confusion will be moved in front of the retina. At this point, your patient is going to report one of the lines clear compared to the other lines on the clock dial chart. Or there is an alternate way also where you're gonna fog your patient using a plus power until all the line in the astigmatic fan chart appears to blur and slowly you're gonna reduce your plus power in 0.25 diopter steps till one of the set of the line becomes clear compared to the other. So here what you're gonna do, you're gonna use a plus lens until all the lines on the astigmatic clock dial chart appears blur. Once that is done, you're gonna slowly start reducing this plus power until this happens where one of the line on the chart appear more clear compared to the other lines. So by both of these two methods, you're gonna achieve similar result where this is also minus one here and here also it is a minus one. So step three is the patient is questioned which set of line is more clear and is expected to respond in numbers which will be marked on the chart dial. So in this step, you will be questioning your patient and asking which set of line is more clear compared to the other set. So if patient says one and seven line is clear compared to the other line on the chart. So next step is to determine the correcting cylindrical axis. A smaller number out of two number is selected which is reported by the patient and a smaller number is multiplied by 30 degrees. So as in a previous step, the patient was preferring 1 and 7 line. So out of these two number 1 and 7, we're gonna select smaller number which is a 1 and we're gonna multiply it with the 30 degrees So which will be our axis of correcting cylinder. The reason behind multiplying 30 degree is because the difference between two number is 30 degree. And reason behind selecting the smaller number, not the bigger number, because this astigmatic clock dial chart represent axis in 360 degrees. But as we know, our cylindrical axis always represented in 180 degrees. So step five is, the examiner then start adding a minor cylindrical lens and simultaneously keep questioning about equal clarity of lines. The examiner continues adding a minor cylindrical lens until the patient report all the lines are equally clear. At the step 5, we're gonna add minus 
0.25 diopterical cylinder what that minus 0.25 diopterical cylinder is going to do it is going to move the foci which is in front of retina towards the foci which is on the retina and we're gonna keep on adding this minus 0.2 until the patient see all the line on the charts are equally clear so this is going to give you final power of the patient to know whether you have got a correct uh, ending point or not the examiner add an extra 0.25 diopterical cylinder to see the reversal as in the previous step 1 and 7 line was clear by adding now 0.25 diopterical cylinder what it is going to do 90 degree apart line will become now clear 4 and 10 line will be clear than the other lines on the chart if this happen, it means you have correctly arrived at your final subjective refraction. So step 7 is to remove the extra 0.25 diopterical cylinder which was added in step 6 and note down the final power of the patient. Last step is to you gonna repeat the same procedure for the other eye. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do subscribe to my channel and please share this video. If you have any queries, you can put your queries in a comment section. I'll be happy to reply them.